Welcome back to the Reharm game. This is level four. This is expert mode. If you haven't seen the other videos, I'll link all of them in the description below. Go check those out. This is not going to be a really beginner uh, or introductory video. We're just going to dive right into the meat and potatoes of it and get into some, you know, some advanced concepts here. So, so as you see, I've laid this out. We're, we're going to do the second half. In the previous videos, we did Twinkle Twinkle, the first half. This is, uh, you know, five, four, three, two of the C major scale. We're in C. So you can get into some parallel motion things. So we're going to talk about all that parallel motion, contrary motion, slash chords, you know, and all the different uh, extensions. We didn't really cover all of them before. So the essence of the reharm game is we're, you know, reharmonizing the melody itself, not necessarily thinking about chord substitutions, although that's part of it. You know, just, just conceptually here, we just want to focus our minds on the melody. The essence of the reharm game is not repeating. So as you see here, up above the... So we have two of the same melody note, right? So the idea is to not repeat, let's say if we do. No, we want some other. You know, just some don't repeat two sounds in a row. That's that's kind of the, the only stipulation, if you will, to the game. It's it's just a game. Let's get into this here. So what we first do is just analyze this G. So if we go from, from top to bottom like this, you know, we'll say that G is the three. We'll start with major here. So E flat, right? It's the four of D. It's the five of C. It is the six or 13 of B flat. We'll go back to seven here. G is the seven. Let's do major seven of A flat. G is the 9, the major 9 of F. G is the sharp 11, because we covered the 11 right here with the 4. G is the sharp 11. So the quick way to do that, G, up a half step, there's your 5. So A flat is the 5 of D flat. You know, that's an easy way to kind of locate this flat 5 right here. So this chord would be D flat, major, sharp 11. So the idea is... When we're reharmonizing a song, the melody to a song, you're going to encounter the same note more than once. This is why you lay this out like this with all of your extensions. And this is, and we should also include the minor as well. I'll do that in just a second. But the reason why you do this is, again, so you have, you know, where all your options are as far as reharmonization goes, right? So now you can, it doesn't have to be just straight up major you know you can you can do sharp five as you see right here with the augmented at the top you see that in in neon green right so let's go through these or or even e flat major six right d the four g is the four of d g is the five of c Again, any sort of any sort of variation of C is fair game because the melody, it's all about the melody here. That's why I was saying chord substitutions. You can you can think of that's what we're doing, but I want you to focus on the melody here. Right, so the seven, the major seven, A flat, as we said, okay? And again, any variation, A flat major seven sharp eleven, A flat major seven sharp five. You know, so the nine of F. Again, you can make this minor nine, wh whatever. It's all good as long as the melody note is the extension that you wrote down and the bass note that you wrote down. Anything in between is is up to you. You know, a little Barry Harris there. Sharp 11 of D flat. Uh, now, I'm playing major, in this case, as you see, 13, but what if we do dominant, you know, dominant, ah, that should say D-flat 13. How can we get it to say D-flat 13, sharp 11? There we go. Right, and then the 13 of B-flat. 
So this is major 13. Minor 7 with a 13 in there. Diminished. But this is the expert mode. This is advanced, so you know all this already. We just covered the major row. Now let's go over the minor row. G is the minor third of what? E minor as a slash, okay? We're gonna be doing the five because we'll get to the four in just a second. We got the, the four, natural four or the 11 right here. D is the five of C. So let's make, let's make that minor. So C minor. Now, you see this right here? This is the sharp five. So let's take a C minor seven. Now let's sharp the five of this, same voicing, but just sharp the five. You hear a lot of that in gospel. G is the sharp five or flat six of what chord? So if G is the 5 of C, just go down a half step, this will get us our minor 6. Right. Sharp 5. But since we're on the minor row, let's use, let's use this. This is B minor plus 5. We'll do it like that. Right, so when we get to the 7 here on the minor row, we already identified that G is the major 7 of A flat. So now what would the minor 7 be? Just go up a whole step. Right, so we got A minor right here. A minor. All right, let's go to the 9. The 9, we have to leave natural because we're on minor chords. I mean, I guess you could play minor 7 flat 9 if you wanted to. Or minor major seven, flat nine. If you if you so dare, so choose. You know, if you want to get all John Cage on us and uh, you know avant garde, or Ornette Coleman, whatever you want to do, that's fine. But but in this case, we got to leave the nine natural. G is the eleven of D. Since we're on the minor row, G will now be D minor eleven. So now on the thirteen. G is the 13 of B flat, but now since it's minor, we'll make this B flat minor 13. Two videos ago, I talked about showing you how to connect sounds that don't really work. This is your way to do that. And that is by reinforcing the melody somewhere or everywhere. So watch this, if you play a cluster, and I play especially higher than, than the cluster, and I play this, You can clearly hear this note, but you hear that there's other stuff happening. You know, that's because this melody is reinforced. And what if I do it again here? Right, so I'll do it here. So you can use, you know, balance, meaning the melody is louder than the chordal accompaniment. You know, you can use balance, um, you can use reinforcement of the melody note other places. You know. Now if I play a bunch of notes, you'll, you'll hear it. And Oscar Peterson talks about a way that he does that by using half steps. So like he'll, he'll, play, he'll play the half step below softer than the actual melody note. You know like that and it's and this note this note sounds stronger right so that's that's sort of a, a, an idea there so the you know those are some ways to you know play chords that that don't really exist you know in in the in the scholastic sense um but make them make sense just by forcing the listener to realize what the melody is okay let's let's play through these Right, so I'm going to play the majors and the minors now, both together.
So let's just analyze what, what's going on here. If we were to start at C, there's a C here, a C here. I see D flat. I see D. I see E flat. E. F. Okay, do we have an F sharp anywhere? Nope. Do we have a G anywhere? Nope. But we got A flat. And we got A. B flat. And B. So right here, we have every bass note represented besides G and F sharp. And really, it's only F sharp that's not existing because, remember, we are omitting the one for this exercise. And if we did that, we would have had G because, you know, G is the one of of G obviously so but that being said this leads me to the first sort of grand idea about you know reharmonizing anything is that any note can work with every chord every note is in every chord and when i do the air quotes like that that's because you have to modify the chords with extensions and things like that but, but we're just talking about the bass note here so the melody note is G let's start on C and we're gonna go up the chromatic scale and make sure G is represented on every one of these bass notes. See? So this is an exercise for you to practice as far as, you know, knowing what to play on the spot per any note. So start with C. Here's your homework. Start with C. And let's figure out how many variations of this bass note allow me to play the melody note C here. So obviously, straight up major major 7 major 13 major 9 13 <laughs> C Ionian man I hate that but yeah so right so let's see add 4 Add four, add two. Okay. All these different voicings. So this is the C minor seven, sharp five that we just talked about. Now we're on minors. You know, go through every chord quality that you can think of. All of that work per bass note. Phrygian. Right, so that is proof that there's every note can be in any chord, right? Are you still with me? I'll know you watched this whole thing if you if you type Herbie in the comments. Okay, now that we've identified all that, let's talk about slash chords. Remember, we're still on the note G. Not only do we have, you know, the root notes of all of these chords, let's start with the major row. Not only do we have the root notes, but now we can also, instead of playing the root in the bass, we can play the third in the bass, the fourth in the bass, the fifth in the bass, the seventh in the bass, the ninth in the bass. We can play any of these extensions in the in the bass, you know. So let's let's just do that. So let's start with E flat. Remember, we're in C, okay? Mm -hmm. 
Right. So let's go to E flat. I'm going to play a E flat major 7. With a third in the bass, that's E flat major 7 over G. Which now, the bass note is the one of the melody note. In the beginning of the video, we omitted the one for this purpose here, because when you start adding your extensions in the bass, Now, what I just played, I played 3, 4, 5, 7, 9, sharp 11, 13 of E flat, not, not of C. We're in the key of C. But in this lesson, whenever we go to a different chord, we're going to now say that the tonal center for this melody note the tonal center changes to whatever this, this new chord is. So that's E flat in this case. But we're in C, right. So I'm gonna go E flat major seven with the one over G. That's the four, five, six, major seven. Major 9, which is the 2, same thing. Right, so that's what's up with the slash chords. Um, you know, any extension of the new chord you just put in the bass note, you know, and now, now per new chord, you have how many different options to go in the bass. So now let's talk about parallel motion versus contrary motion, right? So let's just go back to C. So I know you I know I told you don't repeat sounds, but in this instance, this is another technique here about parallel motion, you know, that you can use. Let's choose A flat major seven. So the melody here is up above the world so high, right? So same chord. The second time we do that, the second time around, let's let's do a minor set. So that was A flat major seven. Now let's do F minor nine. Okay, so the first time we get to A flat, now F. You notice they sound similar, right? Because F minor 9 is A flat major 7 with the 6 in the bass. F is the relative minor of A flat. So that's kind of what, what we're doing there. Now let's talk about contrary motion. Instead of everything moving together in one direction, up or down, now let's move things separately. So let's just think about the chords and the bass. So just pick a change to start on. So with red, I'll just start on... Let's say, um, let's say, let's start here on, on A minor. So what I want to do, I want to use my left hand and the bass to go up this way and my chords to go down this way. Now, remember when I was talking to you about every note fits in every chord and that chromatic exercise we were talking about? This is why you practice that. So you can decipher what can work with contrary motion. So what we have here, we want to go... So let's look at the outside voices, the bass and the melody. So we got... Now, what's a chord that has B as the bass and F as the melody? Well, instantly I can tell B, B diminished or B minor 7 flat 5, right? And just voice differently. Which is D minor over B? I like to think about slash chords. It's, it's again, it's the same... It's the same as B minor 7 flat 5. What's the simplest way I can look at these chords? I want you to start thinking about that. Stop thinking about the the scholastic way of, uh, oh, it's it's got to be called this. No, what, what's the shape in your hand? You know, that's, that's how I perceive all this stuff, right? So, right, so. You know, or.
So we've been moving the bass diatonically, right? Now let's move the bass chromatic, same from the exercise before. Right, so all these techniques are at your disposal. Slash chords, parallel motion, contrary motion, okay? Playing the extensions in your left hand versus only in your right hand. If we go to this sharp 11 here, this, this D flat sharp 11 that we talked about, I'm gonna play all of its extensions in my left hand. Right, so. So what if we what if we take this and go parallel? I've got some practicing to do of my own, but uh I just want to give you this stuff to have these are just tools for you to be able to really just break free from any sort of conventional, you know, things that you're used to hearing. And in the next video, we'll talk about the pro level. The pro level of reharmonization says, you got to watch that right here. I'll see you there.